What's up, YouTube? This is Jose Ortiz from joseortizmedia.com, and today I'm going to be discussing a little bit about my mobile workflow for photography, specifically what I use on the go, and that is my iPad Pro. Look at the size of this thing. I have a huge, huge head, and you see the size of this thing is pretty massive. Look at that. Look at that. But anyways, so... Some people have been asking me, hey, what do you use as your mobile photography rig when you take with you? What kind of bag do you use? What kind of camera do you use? And what kind of editing machine do you take with you? Do you take a MacBook? Do you take a MacBook Air? A MacBook Pro? Do you take an iPad? Uh, do you use your phone? I have the iPhone uh, 6S Plus. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the iPad Pro that I use. Now, prior to the iPad Pro, I had been using an iPad Air first edition, uh, 16 gigabyte, so wasn't really utilized much for my mobile photography, simply because it was only 16 gigabytes. And the primary camera that I use, and I don't have it with me here, and that's shame on me, is for mobile photography is either my Fuji X100T or my X-T1. X-T1, if I want to use some of my old uh, Canon FD lenses, manual mount, manual focus with an adapter. Uh, but for the most part, I take my X100T where I go. Occasionally, I will use my vlogging camera, which is my Canon G7X. But when I want full control of everything, it's the X100T that I primarily take. <laughs> However, uh, those files are pretty massive. And so the 16 gigabytes on the iPad Air went pretty quick like that. So I was like, okay, I need something that has a little bit more space. I know there's external USB drives you can connect. There's mobile hard drives and yada, yada, yada. So I just said, you know what, I just need more on, you know, onboard storage. So my iPad mini, I actually got 128 gigs. It's an iPad mini three. Uh, love that little thing, but I have some pretty massive hands. I mean, look at the size compared to my face. They are huge. And so the iPad mini sometimes to get real fine adjustments on some sliders in uh, Lightroom mobile or Snapseed when I'm moving around, just I needed something bigger. Right, so I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna get an iPad Air 2, 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte. Then my local Best Buy was running a sale where you turned in any working iPad Air, whether it was a one or a two, they gave you at minimum a $200 gift card. Well, I'm not sure who we got that day when we went and turned it in, but they gave me 400 bucks for my iPad Air. Now that is insane, an iPad Air right now just refurbished on Apple's website is, I believe, in the 200s to the $300. So the fact that they gave me $400 for an iPad Air first generation 16 gigabyte was awesome. So the reason why they upped it up was because that deal was if you were going to use that money on that card, on the gift card, to apply it to a pro. So I was talked it over with the wife. I was like, you know what? Let's do it iPad Pro had been, you know, had been enticing a little bit, had been pulling at me a little bit, but I just couldn't pull the trigger. You know, this right here, I got the 128 gigabyte. This is the 128 gigabyte model. <clears throat> was a no-brainer. I got the big iPad Pro, and here it is. I went on Amazon, looked for a case. Always really like just like the smart cover all around. Uh, looked at the iPad Pro keyboard, not 100% sold on that, really expensive. I love the Logitech Create keyboard, but there is a key lag issue that I was uh, experiencing when I was trying to type, especially I'm in grad school now, getting a master's degree or a second master's degree, and just the key lag was too much. I found myself always having to go back and recorrect some things. So I was like, you know what? I need to take that back. I just need some type of case because I just didn't want it in my bag, just naked all around, getting scratched up. Uh, I'm really big on keeping my, my electronics as clean as possible, as scratch-free as possible. Even with cases like this, I got the, the fake, the faux wood on here. Uh, I still take it off at least once or twice a week and just clean it, make sure the, the iPhone doesn't get super scratched. Same thing with the iPads. I've always kept them real uh, protected, try to keep them real clean. And so it was nothing different than this. So I did a quick search. I like this. I know it's gimmicky. It's, you know, people have already mistaken this thing for an actual composition book. So I liked it. It was $12. Uh, I'll leave the description and the link, uh, or the link in the description. Sorry, a little dyslexia there. Uh, but again, it's it's really cool. I like it. This kind of has a dodo case feel to it to me, uh, just because that looks more like a hardbound book, where this looks like an actual composite. 
uh, notebook. <clears throat> and again, it does work smartly. So you can see it turning on and off, on and off and so forth. <laughs> so the next question I'm sure you guys are thinking of is, did he get the Apple Pencil? And if he did, how much did he pay for it? Because that little thing is so hard to find sometimes. Went to my Apple store, asked them if they had it. They said no. They said, just order it online. You'll get it in a couple of weeks. I went online, looked. It was going to take four to six weeks. I'm looking at March before I would get the pencil. Not going to happen. Went to eBay. Cheapest one I was looking for was $135, $145. i am thinking, okay, almost a $50 premium plus shipping, you know. Uh, it's still just, no, I just, I couldn't deal, I couldn't do that, knowing full well that it's a $100 pencil, did not want to spend that much money for it. So I held it off, I held it off, I had been using just my general styluses here, uh, since I don't do a lot of sketching, that's more my wife, so what I keep with me is a little hard pencil pouch, and in here I have, as you can see, there's the Apple Pencil, I have a bamboo stylus. So this is what I would use constantly, constantly. Until it finally came out, and voila, there is the Apple Pencil, okay? So, long story short, went to Best Buy's website one day, just browsing. I like to look at a lot of the deal of the days just to see if there's anything in there that I might need. Do a quick order, movies, things like that. Saw that the pencil was in stock, 99 bucks. I am an elite member, so I get free two-day shipping uh, or expedited, whatever they call it. So it usually gets here in two days. I ordered it on a Monday, came in on a Wednesday. There is the Apple Pencil. Paid the $99, actually a little bit less because I had a couple of rewards point dollars, and there it is. Now, from what everybody has said in all the other videos, this just feels awesome in the hands, okay? It feels just like if you're writing with a pen, with a pencil, whatever you're using, highlighter if you're using, just whatever you normally grab to write with, that's what this thing feels like. You grab it and it just instantly just feels like you're going to write on paper, okay? Uh, Apple Pencil is not probably what I would have called it, but again, it's Apple. They call it like they see it. It does feel, especially if you sketch, use the Adobe Sketch programs, this does sketch amazingly just like a pencil. You do this and it's like you're using a point of the pencil or the point of the pencil. You turn it on its sides and it's just like you're shading. You've seen the reviews. You've heard people talk about it. Here it is. This thing is awesome. Okay. Got it primarily for my wife because she said that if we get this thing that she wants to sketch, she's an amazing drawer. I mean, you see some of these pictures that I have in my room. They are from her, from my Batman to my Joker right here. Okay. She's the drawer. I'm the photographer. She is the artist as far as drawing is concerned. So she is the one who wanted to get the pencil. So I did as much as I could, got her the pencil, and she loves it. Okay. So back to my mobile photography workflow. So what I normally do and what I normally utilize on my iPad is Lightroom. Okay. I primarily use Lightroom. I'm a Adobe Creative Crowd member, Creative Cloud member. And what I normally use is Lightroom. Now on here, I have Camera Plus and Light, a couple of other programs, but like I said, what I like to normally use, and you'll see it there, a few programs I use, oh, I use Lightroom, Snapseed, and of course the Photos app in my photography workflow. How do I get the files in? What I had been using prior, the SD card lightning adapter. Plug this in snap in my card and again this thing guys this thing is awesome i know it's for pencils but again i have my stylus i have my bamboo stylus i put these in here i put the uh i put a pencil in there an eraser because i like to journal i put my styluses i put my pencil zip it up good to go throw it in the bag don't have to worry about the pencil breaking falling out everything's in one little pouch it's awesome so what are my thoughts on the ipad pro completely from a photography standpoint because like i said that's what i've been using it for amongst little things like like youtubing I still got to get used to holding such a massive thing in front of me because again this thing is huge um but my overall impressions is that it is awesome for what i use it for it's great to just do some shooting do some street photography with my x100t uh, and then just load the files in here do some quick editing with lightroom 
and usually I'll go to a coffee shop. Uh, if there's a local coffee shop wherever I'm shooting throughout the hill country of Texas uh, or New Braunfels, San Marcos, so forth, I'll try to find a local coffee shop just so I can support local business. If not, I will at times sell out and go to Starbucks, okay? Get one of their coffees, sit down, do some quick editing. Cool thing about that is that they always have free Wi-Fi. And now most of them do have the Google Wi-Fi, the Google Optics in their stores, uh, especially down here, Austin, San Antonio, San Marcos, New Braunfels, and so forth. So it's really, really fast. Log in, do my quick edits. The cool thing about having Adobe Lightroom Mobile is that it syncs. It's here on my computer over here, or it's on the Surface, which is what I'm using now, because those are the two computers that I have running the full, full blood Adobe Lightroom CC. Load it up, start it up, bam, there's my pictures. Of course, they're JPEGs only. But again, I could do quick edits, post them on the website, post them on YouTube, and so forth. And then if I need to do some heavy editing with the raw files, again, I'll have the memory card, plug it into the uh, Surface or the MacBook Pro 15-inch, download the images, load it up again into Lightroom, start fully editing the full-fledged raw files. So again, for mobile photography, to just grab a bag real quick, throw in a camera. I yeah, I don't seem to have uh, my Ona bag with me, but grab my Ona bag, grab my Ona Brixton or my Union Street bag, throw this in, throw in my camera, have this with me, take off, have my batteries already because they usually stay in my camera bags, do some shooting, use this for some lighting, uh, some light editing. Um, the weight is perfect compared to a MacBook Pro. A MacBook Pro 15 inch retina display, what is what I have, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, everything. It can be pretty heavy, especially carrying around with me since it is a messenger bag. It can get very heavy. So having this with me, very light, considering it is so huge. It's not as light as an iPad Air, obviously. But for the size and what it is, it is awesome. Um, from what everybody has said about it, this thing is just what it is. Great sound. Um, great responsiveness. It has great. It's got the finger sensor on there, which I don't know how I ever lived without. That thing is amazing. Uh, my original iPad Air didn't have it, so I always found myself like a tonto putting my thumb there, and it never worked. Now I have it pretty much on all my devices, and it's amazing. Um, I mean, just the responsiveness here is, I like it. I like the photos uh, that I can edit on here. I like the fact that I could just throw something in here and throw an edit together. Like right here, you see, here's a photo that I took, some blue bonnets a while back. That's straight from my X100T, straight JPEG file. So, I mean, this thing is pretty, pretty awesome. Here's a shot of my wife. I was trying to go a little bit more movie style. So, overall, guys, thanks for watching this video. Again, I give this an A-plus all day for the reasons that I stated and for my particular workflow. This thing works like a champ. Uh, any comments, anything you have, post them down below. Give me a thumbs up for this video and I will be posting more videos about the iPad Pro, uh, my bag, what's in my bag. I'll actually go over that with you guys to kind of show you what's in my photography bag, how I utilize that, and just overall my process in mobile photography. Uh, look at the Ona Brixton bag, the Ona, the Ona Union Street bag that I have. Um, and just kind of give you some more reviews on that thing. So again, guys, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Post any questions you have. Again, I'm going to post a link to this pencil pouch and this case that I got for the iPad Pro. Uh, once again, guys, thank you guys for supporting the channel and for watching this video. Again, this is Jose Ortiz from JoseOrtizMedia.com. You guys have a great day. Peace.